Well, with more, we're now joined by Randy Boissonneau, the Liberal MP for Edmonton Centre. He's also the Associate Minister for Finance and the Tourism Minister as well. Minister Boissonneau, thank you for being here. Thanks, Michael. So the update uh, sets up some very positive numbers, but it also outlines a scenario that's not as rosy. Should we really be focused on those numbers? Should we really expect some tough times ahead? Well, Michael, it's a really good question, and I think what the fall economic statement today says is there's there's three ways to look at the document. First, supports to Canadians for those who need it the most during these times of rising cost of living. A fiscal prudent plan that shows us on a, uh, you know, with a fiscal anchor to getting to uh, a really good balanced budget in, in 27, but also making sure that we have a, an economy that's competitive around the world. And so we wanted to be upfront with Canadians. We wanted to show the base case, which is the case that finance gets by blending all of the uh, predictions of all of the uh, economists at the banks and uh, companies here in Canada. But we wanted to show Canadians that, based on some unpredictability around the world, that there is a downside case. And we wanted to show that to Canadians. But I can tell you, our economic fundamentals are strong. We have 400,000 more Canadians working than we did at the beginning of the pandemic. The lowest deficit in the G7, the lowest debt to GDP ratio in the G7, and our economy is 103% large, like about what it was before the pandemic. So there's good economic fundamentals. There are going to be some tough times coming ahead due to global inflation. And that's why our focus is making sure that we have affordability supports in place for those Canadians who need it the most. Okay, so fundamentals supports as you lay out. But, you know, when Canadians hear tough economic times, the, the big question is whether or not there's going to be a recession. We know that the financial conditions that uh, essentially inform this update are back from September. At the time of the survey, I think uh, there was roughly, what, a 40% probability of recession. Uh, we know that interest rates have gone up, inflation has barely come down. So is recession more likely now? Well, it's not a question necessarily more likely because we still, there's still some uncertainty in what the global economy is going to throw at us. And look, the question is, how long does Russia continue its illegal war in Ukraine? How long does China continue with its zero COVID policy? How long before supply chains reorient themselves after the pandemic? And so we wanted to make sure that the downside case was in there. And look, is a recession possible? Yes. Is it probable? That's still the question. But we wanted to be upfront with Canadians. And Michael, what I can tell you that we we will do is we will update this scenario in budget 23 and we'll have a much better idea of where we are by the time uh, we're at budget 23. Okay so so a possibility uh, some challenges to use the words that we heard the minister but you know these inflationary pressures they have as you know very well resulted in uh, more revenue for the government in terms of a greater uh, taxation and what it was into government coffers so after that should and knowing that there's going to be tough times ahead, should that surplus have been applied to more measures to help the average Canadian, like, for example, uh, removing the GST and heating, as the NDP suggests, or foregoing the planned increase in the carbon tax, as the Conservatives are suggesting? Well, I think if we take a look at where the revenues came from, they came from hardworking Canadians whose businesses and small businesses are doing well. And quite frankly, the reason that they're able to do well is because we invested half a trillion dollars in our economy, in Canadians, in provinces, in communities to get us through the pandemic. And so what we're seeing now is the benefit of the economy doing well. And so we thought we need to be fiscally prudent that's why we're putting so much of the, the new revenue to the bottom line, so we have that very low deficit. It's also why we're focusing those supports on the Canadians who need it the most. And, I mean, Michael, I think you have the list, right? We're forgiving, we're eliminating student debt, we're going to have a sustainable jobs fund, we've got several measures to make housing more affordable, and we're also going to make sure that those supports don't add fuel to the inflationary fire. So that's the, those are the brackets that we're in, and we think we've hit a really good note to support Canadians, to position us for the future economically, but also to have a, a good fiscal track. Okay, but, the, but as you laid that out, those are obviously targeted supports. They do help students. They do help lower-income households. But what do you then say to middle-class households? Because they, too, the middle class, are dealing with higher costs for things like groceries, gas, and home heating. How does this update help them? So, the, I mean, if we take a look at the fall economic statement, it's not in isolation, right? We had the doubling of the GST, and those checks are going to hit people's bank accounts uh, tomorrow, or they'll be in the mail as of tomorrow. We also have the uh, $500 housing top-up and the dental supports that are going to go out to kids. I think it's half a million kids uh, under 12 years old. Those supports are going to help the middle class and vulnerable Canadians. And, Michael, we got to build this into 
cutting child care fees in half and the Canada Child Benefit, those of which those particular benefits are indexed to inflation. So if you take a look at all the supports we put in place, we're very focused on affordability. And then the investments we're making in the economy are going to position us when we get out of this you know, inflationary cycle to really compete on the world stage. And that's why the Canada Growth Fund is so important. That's why the... the uh, tax credits for uh, clean tech and also clean hydrogen are really important to position Canada for the future. Okay, you mentioned the Canada Growth Fund, but sure. before the Canada Growth Fund, there was, uh, initiated by, again, the Trudeau government, uh, the Canada Infrastructure Bank, and that was to encourage private investment mm -hmm. in public projects. It's not performed as well as originally sold. How do you ensure that the Canada Growth Fund will do better, given that we have in the United States uh, an, uh, an Inflation Act that does heavy investments into green industries? I, I love the question, Michael, and I will be the first to say that the Canadian Infrastructure Bank was too narrowly scoped when it came out of the gate, and we've sort of, we've, we've given them more scope. What's different about the Canada Growth Fund is a couple of things. It's going to be entirely outside of government. It's going to be stood up quickly. It's going to have an independent council of governors to oversee it, but it's $15 billion from us that's going to crowd in $45 billion more, that's a $60 billion fund to invest in electrifying our, greening our electricity grid, green investments around the country, small nuclear reactors. These are the kind of things that we need to do in this country to compete with the Americans and others at scale. And we are going to make sure that Canadian companies want to stay home and that international companies want to set up right here in Canada. Mm -hmm. Does it do enough to, to meet the challenge of the Inflation Reduction Act in the United States? Uh, you know, your own, your own colleague, Mr. Wilkinson, said that that uh, inflation Reduction Act in the U.S. created this uneven playing field. Does the policies talked about today address that uh, that imbalance? It's a great question, and there's a line right in the fall economic statement that the statement today is to ensure that we create a level playing field vis-a-vis -vis the Americans. And the other thing we can say is that today's fall economic statement is a down payment. So we're going to continue to calibrate. We're going to continue to work with industry. We're going to make sure that uh, there's a, a bright future, not just for Canadian businesses, but for Canadian workers. And that's our job, and we're, we're going to get that done. Randy Boissonneau, thank you for this. Appreciate the time. Thanks, Michael.